Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me, Me, Me. So for those of you who are finding my channel for the very first time, my name is Marshawn and I'm your life and relationship strategist. I help men and women alike to create the relationship that they want, need, and desire by helping them implement simple tips and strategies within their relationship so they can create that relationship. All right, today we are going to talk about defining the word chemistry and can it be developed over time? Right after this. All right, fam, thanks so much for coming back to I Love Me, Me, Me. So someone asked me this question, which is, can I define chemistry and can it be developed over time? So um, the simple answer is, yes, it can be developed over time. However, I do want to give you the definition of what chemistry is. Chemistry is an emotion you feel for someone that makes you think, I need to see him or her again. That feeling you get when two things just click, right? So that's the definition of chemistry. I already said that it definitely can be developed over time. Here, here are four reasons why chemistry can and should be developed over time anyway. The very first thing that you must think about when it comes to chemistry and when you're out here dating and just getting to know different people is that that initial chemistry is not an indicator of how the relationship will unfold. It's not. You can tell, okay, you know what, I'm actually attracted to this person, whether it's sexually or, you know, if you actually have had a conversation with them and you're like, damn, they're very intellectual. I actually, I'm really feeling the way this conversation is going and there's potential here, but don't do that to yourself. Just slow it down. The initial chemistry that you feel or don't feel is not an indicator of how your future will unfold and I have um, of course I have several stories but this particular one is about one of my siblings <laughs> um, when he met his wife she she really wasn't feeling him she she was not really feeling him and basically he did the chase and he wore her down <laughs> and um, I said wife so obviously they're married now but she was not feeling him she just was like you know how you kind of just meet somebody and it's just okay now they have a thriving, wonderful relationship. Hell, they got four kids. They've been doing the doggone thing. They've been married. I'm close to 20 years now. So, uh, yeah, but but she wasn't feeling him in the beginning. And I've actually heard a lot of these relationships. Actually, my mom and my um, my stepdad, when they met, they were just talking as friends. And she wasn't necessarily attracted to him to say, let's build a relationship together. They both kind of met because they were going through something and they were just basically bouncing stuff off of each other. And then things unfolded. They did their healing. Um, and then they decided to, you know what, well, let's just do this damn thing. I actually like you. You like me. And obviously there's more to it, right? But you get my drift. A lot of times when you initially meet somebody, and hell, I forgot about my own relationship. I think I, I shared this with you guys before, but even with my own husband, initially when we first met, I was just like, oh, I mean, you know, the date was fine. Yeah, with that voice too. The date was fine, but I really didn't think that he liked me like that. And then um, at the end of the date, he was just like, okay, when can we see each other again? So, and I was like, okay, well, let me check my calendar. <laughs> so, um... So um, the, the, the initial chemistry that is there or is not there is not an indicator of how the relationship will unfold. So just keep that in mind, okay? The, mo the, the, the relationships that I actually hear are the quote-unquote best. Now, of course, this is debatable, but are the relationships that you don't think that you're going to have a great time with them and after a while you're spending time together you are actually having conversations with each other you're really feeling that person the connection is uh, building the intimacy is building and all of a sudden don't let somebody talk about your boo because it's on and popping <laughs> all of a sudden you're like hold up hold up Mwah. you know whatever whatever you got to say right but uh in the beginning you was like i mean you know they all right Man, all right. But then you went on. Anywho, let me move on. I'm just saying keep all of that stuff in mind that in the beginning, you might be like, ah, nah. But don't worry. Okay? I'm going to move on to step number two. Okay, number two. What well, Number two is when we first go out on these dates, we're first meeting somebody, we have, we have a lot of nervous energy because we want to be, you know, we want to be there tight, whether, whether we verbally say that or not, right? Because... However you met him, whether it was online and you met him when you was out and about, y'all just had an initial conversation. 
But when it's time to actually go out on the date and you're face to face with the person and, you know, it's time to have the conversation and, you know, are they going to like me or not? It's a lot of nervous energy and everything. Or, you know, something could have just happened before you decided to go out on a date and you're not necessarily in the best mood, but you don't feel like canceling it. So you might be preoccupied up here and you kind of come off the wrong way. Or again, the person that you're meeting can be going through some stuff as well, but they didn't want to cancel the date. And so then you're like, okay, well... I don't know if that was good or not. So one of you or even both of you could be preoccupied. What I would say is that you guys just, if you could reschedule because you want to be your best person. But I understand that life sometimes don't work that way. You do have a busy schedule. You actually um, pencil this person in. You want to make this particular date. So try to try your best that if it's that way and you're just super busy that you make the best out of it and just kind of. Do something where you need to like shake all of that off before you go into the date, whether it's prayer, whether it's meditation, whether it's just laughing out loud. Like see, laughing is an antidote to just have um, to just help you reset before you even go into a quote unquote argument, a, a business um, um, talk or uh, relationship or just something just helps you get out of your own way. So when you go in there that you can have a great date in this instance and then of course when once you start to relax after all of that nervous energy you're like oh my god oh my god oh my god right and so after you start to relax you can really start to showcase who you truly are and be yourself and not worry about if he or she is actually going to like you because if you're being yourself more than likely they are going to like you unless you are just a complete jerk complete a-hole more than likely they're gonna like you back but don't pretend to be somebody else as much as possible throw that representative in the trash actually put them in the toilet and flush them because when you're out here and you're trying to build a actual relationship you really want to be in a relationship with the right person and you want to get to know the person that you're in a relationship with right so again i know that i'm jumping ahead but as much as possible get rid of that representative because a lot of us fall fall for the representative and then once you get into the relationship then guess what you like wait a minute this ain't who i got in a relationship with who is this so as much as possible trash put it in the toilet throw it away that representative okay the third thing about chemistry is that it actually ebbs and flows. This chemistry can come and go depending on your partner's behavior. Okay? So, <laughs> sometimes you be wanting to smack the diggity dog on crap out of your partner. Of course, I don't recommend that. But sometimes you be feeling that way. Because they just got a little stank butt attitude. And you like, dude, what, what in the heck is going on with you? Or... Chick, woman, whatever, whatever word you insert there, right? What is going on with you? Whether you verbalize that line or not doesn't matter, but you might, you might give them the face like, really? <laughs> really? Like, no, nah, it, it don't even take all that. So the chemistry will ebb and flow throughout the relationship. Like, yes, in the dating stages, it seems more crucial in the dating stages because you like, oh, I thought we was vibing and, you know, I thought we was doing good. And then all of a sudden... He did X, Y, and Z. All of a sudden, she did X, Y, and Z. But just, just realize that that is a part of just relationship, just life, and learning how to deal with these things if they are a potential winner, right? And then this day, they have a down day, right? But usually, they good. So I'm not saying that they always got a stank attitude. That probably is not going to work out. But if it's one time, especially in the dating stages or, you know, even several times, depending on how long y'all been dating, but you get my drift, especially in the beginning, uh, you want to put your best foot, you want to put your best foot forward. However, sometimes that is not going to occur, which leads me into point number four, which is do not give up on a person until after you have had six dates with them. Yes, this goes along with the chemistry, but this is, this is the entire thing when I'm talking about dating someone because all of that nervous energy, it should be down to a minimum by date six. You should see if you actually want to continue seeing them. Y'all should be thinking, and maybe, maybe the conversation comes up or maybe it doesn't, but y'all both should be thinking, you know what? Maybe we should make this exclusive because I actually like him. I actually like her. Give it time for things to actually build up. Build up the connection. Build up the intimacy. Build up the flirt flirting, right? 
just to build up everything and cutting somebody off on the first, the second, the third date because things didn't go right or they were a bit awkward or you felt like there was a lot of um, quiet, dead, dead space in there. It's okay. Because sometimes people are just overly nervous and they might think that you are the finest thing walking. And so you are making them nervous. And instead of them coming off as sweet and innocent and cute and you're finding it adorable, you, you irritate it. <laughs> so just give the person a chance. If initially you found them to be physically attractive, because that's the first thing we have to go off of. Let's just be real. You found them physically attractive enough to hold a conversation with them, enough to go out and meet on the date. Give it several dates. In this case, I have to say six because you want the stuff to flow and you want the nervous energy to go away and then you want it to become more natural so the conversations can flow so you don't necessarily have to think about, okay, did I ask this question? Did I ask that question? What are they doing? How are they treating me? You're not going through your checklist after a while. It's just things are now more in a relaxed state and you're able to just be yourself. So yes, Chemistry absolutely can build over time if you allow it to. So now, fam, have you been guilty of just throwing the person away after one or two dates because you didn't feel the chemistry? Have you been actually guilty thinking that the in initial chemistry is going to be the way the relationship unfolds? Because as I already mentioned, that is not true. And... Finally, are you guilty of being the person where you have a lot of nervous energy and then every time you decide to go out on a date, it's awkward. It's okay. Just take some deep breaths. Listen to some music. Try to relax yourself. I want to say have a drink, but some people don't drink. So whatever you do to relax yourself because sometimes the drinking people can get out of hand because they want to be more relaxed and then they they wonder why they don't get a call back because now you're looking like a sloppy drunk <laughs> so as much as possible don't do the drinking but if you can handle your liquor but you know that one glass of wine or even one shot of liquor is going to just simmer you out just do it just this time you can even tell them listen i was nervous because that'll actually Actually, if you say, I was nervous, I was nervous coming out here meeting you, then all of those little awkward moments in between there, you can be forgiven for them because now they're like, okay, I see what's going on with this person. I can understand them a little bit better. I've been nervous too. I might not be nervous tonight, but I've been nervous myself going out on dates. So I can actually give them a pass and feel like they're being cute and adorable versus you just going in there and just like, oh my God, now you stoic and you just, you just looking a hot day a mess and nobody wants to date you. So anywho, y'all hope that this has benefited you guys to let you know that the chemistry can build over time and just give it at least the six date rule. I actually talked about that in depth. I have a video about the six dates and actually I'll link that um, down below and of course up here so you guys can check that video out as well. I will see you guys in a future video. Deuces.